Hello fantastic people. If you want to create games, you will have to work with vectors. So let me tell you what they are and how they work. Vector is a mathematical term used to describe an object consisting of direction and magnitude, which is nothing more than a fancy word for length. In Unity you will be working mainly with 2D vectors and 3D vectors, Vector2 and Vector3. Some of the most important information they consist of are set of coordinates, x and y for vector 2 and x, y and z for vector 3. They represent the position of head in regards to the start of the vector. For example, game object position is described as three coordinates, x, y and z. And that's the position of the end of the vector starting at 0, 0, 0 position. Next useful information is vector's magnitude which as said at the beginning of the video is nothing more than a length of the vector. Then we have normalized value of the vector. This one is a little bit more tricky. Usually when we describe direction we do it using angles, but we could do it also using x, y and z components. In fact it is so common that the vectors contain several static variables, describing most used directions. If you look closely, you will see they have something in common. Their magnitude is 1. This makes it very easy to work with them in variety of situations. You will see some of them later in this video. You may wonder what does it have to do with normalization. You see, in most cases, vectors you will work with will point towards very odd directions. You will not be interested in their magnitude, but only in their direction. And that's what the normalized value is. It's basically a value containing a vector of magnitude 1 but having the exactly the same direction as the source vector. Now let's have a look at the most common operations on vectors. Even though Unity is doing all the magic for you, it is worth knowing what's happening. Adding two vectors to each other is extremely easy. You take a vector and combine their x, y and z components. And that's it! I think the most common operation on vectors is multiplying them by a scalar value. That means by a simple number. To do that you take all the components of the vector, x, y and z and multiply them individually by the number. Dividing the vector by a number works exactly the same way. Of course you can also check if the vectors are equal or not. Two vectors are equal when their directions and magnitudes are the same. Awesome! Let's have a look at some useful methods provided for us by a vector class. Let's start with the one I'm using the most, distance. Very often we use vectors to describe positions. The distance method allows us to know how far from each other they are. Some common use cases would be finding the closest enemy or checking if the enemy sees us. Second interesting method is lerp. It expects three parameters, two vectors and a float between 0 and 1. And depending on that third value, it returns a vector somewhere in between the first vector and the second one. Let's assume we have two vectors and we provide 0 as the third parameter. In this situation lerp will return the first vector. If we change the third parameter to 1, we receive the second vector. Now, if we change the value to 0.5, we receive a vector exactly halfway between the first vector and the second one. In general, we use it everywhere where we need smooth transitions between two vectors. Good example of it would be creating moving platform for a platformer game. There is very similar method called move towards. It also allows you to transition smoothly from one vector to the other. However, as a third parameter, it accepts the actual distance you want to move the object. Now it's time for a very interesting method. Reflect. Imagine you have a very bouncy bullet. It is traveling towards a wall. And you would like to know in what direction the bullet will be traveling after hitting the wall. That's what reflect method can be used for. It expects you to provide two parameters. The initial direction in a form of vector and the normal of the reflecting surface. And of course returns the vector pointing in the new direction. Next very useful method is a dot. It returns something called a dot product. The theory behind calculating the value is a little bit complex, but you shouldn't ever need it. The only important thing to know is that it returns a relation between two vectors' directions. It returns a value between 1 and minus 1. 
If it returns 1, it means two vectors are pointing in exactly the same direction. If it returns minus 1, it means the vectors are exactly opposite. The most interesting value it can return is 0. It means two vectors are perpendicular to each other. Of course, as mentioned before, the values can be anywhere between 1 and minus 1. Common use case would be checking if two game objects are traveling in the same direction. Now let's have a look at cross method. It returns a vector perpendicular to two provided vectors. Also here the math is a little bit complex, <laughs> but you shouldn't worry about that. Let's have a look at it from more practical side. Let's imagine we have two vectors. Our object is facing a direction indicated by the first vector. We want it to face the direction indicated by second vector. To rotate it, we need to find the rotation axis. We create a plane nicely aligned with the first and second vector. Then we draw a vector perpendicular to that plane. Of course, there are two vectors. To know which one is the right one, we can use our left hand. This vector is the vector returned by the cross method. Now let's have a look at some examples of using vectors. First one will be typical AD direction movement. We gather horizontal and vertical input and combine them to input vector. We multiply this vector by a certain speed. And now we apply this vector to rigid body's velocity. Now we have a little problem. Our character will be moving a little bit quicker when moving diagonally. That's because the diagonal input vector has slightly longer magnitude. To fix that problem, we can simply normalize the input vector and then multiply it by speed. Fantastic! Now let's have a look at typical top-down shooter scenario. We make our character to look always at the mouse position. For simplicity, let's assume we only gather the vertical input. When pressing up arrow key, we want the character to move forward. When not rotated, our character is looking up. We simply multiply the transform up by the speed and by the input. The horizontal movement could be handled exactly the same way, just using transform right instead of transform up. There's much more to vectors than that. You can find more details about vectors in the official Unity documentation. I left links to it in the description of this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment. And of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Have a lovely day, love you and bye bye.